I was really like on a groove of unpacking and now I got stuck in exactly the same place I got stuck a year and a half ago. And why I had, it's debilitating. It's why we had the basement like it was and what even started me on decluttering and minimalism was the thousands of things that I had. Here we are again and I'm stuck. I've come to a patch of school supplies. We homeschool if you're new here. And I'm facing eight boxes of school supplies and books we use for school lessons. I have already done two big rounds of decluttering of school supplies. <laughs> I know these are keep. These are the Osborne first readers. Um, my daughter is starting to read and I have two first reader sets for her. She's flying through them. So I'm going to save this for her. These are great. Um, we talk about bees in the springtime. I have a whole stack of spring books that I'm sure to come across that will go with this. All the school supplies that I decide to keep today, I'm going to find a home for in the schoolroom. And if it's for a future year, I'm going to give it to another family. We never, this is a gorgeous book, but we never ever reference it. Ever. These are beautiful character development stories. I love these. Okay. Spring. Spring. Oh, this is winter. We'll keep that for winter. Spring. Okay. Moonshine down. This is good for geography. Tell me tree. I love Gail Gibbons. We never really referenced this book though. So I'm gonna give this one away. Magic and Mystery of Trees, DK, Discovery Kids. Also not something we reference. Ocean Meets the Sky, gorgeous book. Keep, cause these are also read alouds in school for us. Rosie Revere Engineer. There's a whole thing that goes with this, like a journal and activities. So uh, Planet Earth, and it's small text. My kid's not interested. So I'm gonna donate this. Okay. This is all recycled. Okay. The ones I wanna keep. So this is my keep box. Okay. Okay. Can't even tell what some of this is. Okay. Uh, this is keep. I'm actually glad that I found this because I use this and Oh, yeah. Keep. This is my home. This is my school. Keep. Street beneath my feet, and then there's skies above my eyes. We have that one upstairs. Pages come out, and the kids lay on the ground and just read. So this is cute. Whew. Okay. All of the math start books are going to be keep. I'm gonna donate this, cause we don't use this. We watched some documentary on Jane Goodall, but we never really read the book. How Weather Works. I'm going to donate this. All the Magic Treehouse or Keep, they are upstairs on the kids' bookshelves. What My Kindergartner Needs to Know. This was a great reference when I was first homeschooling. Um, I would not reference this now because you could just Google that title and get some answers. But I have a really good sense of what I want each kid to learn at the kindergarten grade, pre-K and first grade. So I don't need this anymore. I'm going to give this away to a homeschool family. Definitely helpful when I was first starting out. Nature Anatomy. This is a great book. As you can tell, we've used it quite a number of times. Um, we've used it at the beach a lot because it actually has beach stuff too. So I'm going to keep this. Wildflowers of North America. We use this. Glad we found that. Scrabble dick. No, Scrabble. Regular dictionary. Keep. Children's dictionary. We really like. We didn't use this. 
donate. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie Bogert's gracious space for spring, winter, and fall keep. Geography Encyclopedia. I'm not gonna keep this. We just don't reference it. World history. I mean, a lot of this stuff, I have a history book that we reference and then I have a DK timelines of everything that we reference. We just, we've never used this. I bought these at the beginning of my journey, thinking, the beginning of my homeschool journey, thinking we would reference these all the time. Oh my gosh, Osborne has all this stuff. And then you buy it and it's not what you want. These are all donate. And then these books, I love these three books. Journey, Return, and Quest. They are picture books, no words, and we just open to a page and the kids make up a story. My son, my first grader, practices writing by writing a story with these books. So um, these are keep. Zoe and Sassafras science books, these are keep. And I have a lot of uh, free printables that go along with these as lessons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. I think seven actually came out. My son loved these books. My daughter will really enjoy these books. So these would be a great um, science companion for her um, as read alouds I could read to her. A hard time letting go of books. The rest is Magic Treehouse. I'll keep. I don't know if I could do all eight today. That was a really aggressive goal. <laughs> supplies from my a week-long science camp that my son did online at the start of pandemic they're going in recycling so many lids for so many bins that we actually don't even have anymore I'm gonna give this away word detective grade two I'm gonna give this away this this won't enhance anything that my oldest is doing. So I'm going to give this away. This. So this is a half completed good and the beautiful book. I'm going to um, trash recycle. Okay. Okay, let's try one more. Let's see. Uh, I struggle a little with the amount of books that I'm keeping, but I have a hard time getting rid of books. not going to beat myself up about the current decision. I have chosen 12 things already, 12-ish things already for giveaway, so I'm not going to beat myself up. Okay. Percy Jackson, my son did not want to watch the movie or read the book, so that's such a good one, isn't it? <laughs> he didn't want to read it because there's no pictures. So, I have a hard time getting rid of books. Oh, the what if is plaguing me. Like, what if he wants to read it later? Well, then we'll buy it later on Kindle or whatever. Why am I wanting to keep this so much? Because it's a book and what I want my children to experience. But my son is a very avid reader. He reads a lot like I do and he has plenty that he's already reading. He doesn't need, he, he, when he reads a book, he starts a book and he's like, I don't like this book. He doesn't read it. So why would I force this book on him? I wouldn't, I'm giving away. <clears throat> Meteorology. Okay, this is a keep because I was actually wanting to switch to unit studies for science rather than doing the curriculum that we're doing. So this is a keep and it's gonna go upstairs. Cool. Uh, BFG, my son liked this. It has pictures, so this is a keep. Trees and their world. This is a uh, companion book that goes with one of the Good and the Beautiful Science uh, Botany studies, unit studies, and my son loved that. Um, lesson. So I'm going to save this. These are opposite puzzle cards. It's kind of stuff like from Target dollar store. I used to just gobble up. I don't even go to Target anymore because I just, I don't want to shop or spend money needlessly. And that's what this is. 
Butterfly Life Cycle, Luna Moth Parts. This is all part of my spring unit study, which I have a feeling I'm coming to. Yep, spring, exploring nature with children. That was a good curriculum. I liked that. A lot of good book suggestions in there. Um, Minecraft. Mad Libs. This is so good because we just started doing parts of speech. Oh yeah, this would be perfect and he loves Minecraft. Okay, so this is all teacher supply stuff that um, is for spring. I do wanna keep all the things I decided to keep. I, I'm struggling because it just feels like more than I want to house in the schoolroom right now. It's just not what I wanna do halfway through the school year here is probably a really good time to calibrate what we're actually using versus not using and i think the things that i've chosen to keep i need to find a home for that's the problem that's the problem these things don't have a home that's the problem that's the same problem i always come back to why do i not use that as my solution every time i always have to get here like this okay so the problem is they don't have a home that's totally my problem right now, is I'm choosing to keep things that don't have a place. Okay. I don't want it just sitting on the shelves in the schoolroom. It becomes visual clutter and I get, I, I tune it out. I don't, I don't see the lesson on bees anymore. I just see a stack of stuff that I'm not using. That's what it turns into. Unpacking these school supplies is really just ripping the band-aid off of something that's been bugging me in my mind for the last six weeks, is that we aren't using the schoolroom like it's built to be used. The kids haven't been sitting at their desks. We do a lot of school at the table. We're back to that routine. The answer to what I'm keeping is to find a home for it in the schoolroom. That's the answer for that. My problem is the volume of things that I'm trying to find a home for. I watched Cass the Clutterbug this week. She did a clothing video. She said step one is to take everything out of her closet. Take it all out. And then as you're evaluating each piece, really decide, is this something I wear? Is it something I love? Do I really wanna keep this? And as you're putting it back into an empty closet, make that decision, own it. And maybe that's what I need to do with the schoolroom. It's just start over. I kept more than I was anticipating and I'm struggling with that right now. It is causing me anxiety that I haven't felt in a while where we, we were surrounded by clutter that had no purpose and no use. And we've reached that stage again in the schoolroom. And I quite like seeing them. They don't feel like visual clutter at this time. That may change over time. But I am now still facing the issue that we just are not utilizing this room. In the fall, we definitely did schoolwork at desks every day. And I just bounced from desk to desk to desk for each of the kids. This is supposed to be our games shelf. This is extra stuff where we, we pull in and rotate each month. And then my desk is in the corner now. So I wanna talk about two things to end this video. One, this is what happens when I don't follow my own paper system for six weeks. And that video is coming on Wednesday of next week. It is part of the Clutter Free January with Dawn. We are talking paper clutter next week. I'm addressing that and showing you my entire paper system. The second thing I want to talk about is that I am going to address this room the cast the clutter bug way. I'm going to pull all of this out, set a blank slate, and then put back what we need for school for winter, spring term. I'm going to do it in the next video on Monday, coming in a couple of days. So subscribe for that video. And I'm going to show you why because our, our school room has bled into our dining room. We've got games, Osmo, Play-Doh, Chris stuff they got for Christmas. Over there are some school puzzles we use, our art cart. We do school at the table. Someone just had some waffles. 
And this is the stack that we actually use on a weekly basis for all three kits. This is all the subjects for all three kits, which means all of this needs to be reset and planned for for the next four to six months. And then anything that's not part of the plan, I need to declutter, reevaluate, or figure out storage for. Okay, great. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Keep on filming and you'll see that video in a couple of days. I have become very single tasked in my journey of minimalism and even more now reading about slow living. I just want to do one thing at a time. <laughs> and maybe it's because I'm turning 45 and that's just how my brain works now. But I just want in front of me what we're focusing on presently. And I don't want anything else in the background anymore. I have to find a way to manage the peripheral things in school that we're not presently using in this term, but we will use, because I know we're gonna, we'll reference, I know we will reference. Thanks for watching.